Hello everyone, welcome back to Spiritual Essence. In this video, we're going to be talking about candle magic. I know magic can be really placed with anything. Kitchen magic, garden magic, house magic, you know, something like that. But, this is actually magic used with candles. Candles are one very important tool in a witch's toolbox. And they have great possibilities. If you, now I've said it before that magic doesn't have to be complicated. If you can't afford like fancy things like statues and a thames and um, different oils and herbs, that's fine. You don't have to get all complex to work with magic. But if you were to get anything, candles would be among them. At least one. It don't have to be fancy. It can be the unscented. So I have a bunch of candles here, different kinds. And all of them, pretty much every candle has a magical application. So we will begin by studying the candles that I have here how they're used, and uh, how one can perform candle magic. So the first one I'm going to show you is one of my favorite. I got this one from a little spiritual shop near my house. Uh, it's called Earth Lore. It's in, um, what was it, uh, Plymouth, Michigan. So if you are ever in Plymouth, Michigan, and you find yourself, you know, in the midst of earth lore, go check it out. It's a good store. Oop. A little bit of wax. Take that off. But this is called a Reiki candle. And um, if you guys don't know what Reiki is, Reiki is basically working with a person's energy and chakras to heal them or diagnose certain problems that are going on with them based on someone's energy. There are people who are trained to do this. I am not. Um, I have books on Reiki, but I have not studied them. But this is basically a pre-charged candle with different intentions. This one is for healing. I've already burnt this, as you can see, um, for healing a relative of mine who was uh, sick lately. And it worked. She is doing a lot better now. Um, now, I believe, I'm not sure, um, I'm not sure if this is beeswax, but um, it's very good wax, whatever they use it with, but um, beeswax I don't have in my possession, um, but beeswax is number one out of every candle. It's what they used in ancient times for candles and for rituals. It is said to be the purest. Uh, candle wax you can use and um, it's definitely a favorite among the uh, the gods of many cultures especially uh, ancient Egypt um, so this is just a pre-charged candle with the intent of healing I buy I have two more of these one for creativity and one for inspiration um, so that is really, really uh, cool. I haven't uh, lit the other ones yet, but when the time comes, I will. So we got regular taper stick candles. Uh, these are unscented, but they are colored. They are, uh, I want to say, um, baby blue, unless I'm colorblind. Now, um, if you need to do a candle spell and you want it to burn for a long time and you want it to have um, a great effect these are the way to go <clears throat> long taper stick candles now these are from a dollar castle and you know I hear from everyone well the candles are cheap everything's cheap you know uh, they might not burn as well and I've had some where they've they burnt straight through the middle while leaving the outside wax unmelted. 
But these these work fine. <clears throat> these do work fine. Um, and I will definitely show you uh, how to utilize these properly for a ritual. <clears throat> then we have tea light candles. Uh, these ones are scented blue raspberry. Oh, I love love this smell. Very nice. Very small little candles as you can see and there's quite a bit of them. I bought four packs because I love the smell. And they're so accessible. They burn away, no problem. We have the scented candles. Now these are the more expensive ones that you may find at uh, Bath and Body Works. Uh, these ones are like 25 a piece but this one I got for a Christmas gift and um, mm, it's called whipped coffee and it smells good I love coffee smells I do coffee I'm more of a coffee drinker and I love the coffee smells and it says scented candle made with natural essential oils which means coffee oil which is awesome <clears throat> then we got these miniature stick candles um, these ones are called blackout candles, um, obviously meant for if you were to lose power, you light them, you light your way. Um, it's good to have, just in case, but I don't use them for that. I use them for rituals. Basically, I use most of my candles for rituals, but sometimes I just like to burn a candle, you know, every once in a while. You know, I love burning candles. It may be a part of my witchy personality. I don't know. So how would each one of these be utilized in a ritual? Well, start from the beginning. Since the Reiki candles are pre-charged, I don't have to charge them, which saves a load off me. Now, I understand some people would have concerns that um, the people who had these before may not have the best of energies. Well, this is part of a spiritual store. I'm sure they know what they're doing. These people have been around for a long time. They definitely know where to get quality spiritual items. I can definitely feel with my uh, hand chakras the uh, specific energies in mind. I know there's nothing bad. If there was something bad, I would have felt it. <clears throat> but from my knowledge, this is legit. If you worry about that, then you can charge your own candles. That, you know, you don't have to buy these. Um, so basically, since they're pre-charged and they're charged with a specific energy, obviously they're going to have a specific use. I use this in a healing ritual. And no, I did not burn the whole thing. Um, they te Technically, people say you should burn the entire... Some people say you should burn the entire candle. Some people say after you burn a candle and if you don't uh, use it up, you should cleanse it, you know, before. These are a little different since I already know the energy that goes into them. I know what it's for. And if I need to use another ritual to, you know, for healing... I can bring it out for that. There's going to be no corruption of energy there because I'm only going to use it for the specific healing rituals. Now they say if uh, a good candle, if all of the wax burns away, that means a spell is destined to work. Because along with the wax, the energy goes up into the atmosphere too. It is released and vaporized with the candle wax. Uh, and that's why another reason why people use beeswax candles because it usually tends to burn up all of the wax. Um, I've heard different things about soy candles. You know, some say they, they do work well and some say they don't. I don't use them. Now, let's say you were to buy a pack like this of regular stick candles. They're non-scented. They're colored, though. Well, we use in the uh, spiritual 
people like me use different colors to specify different emotions, different energies. I could tell you what uh, I say each color is, but technically everyone has their own preference. I've seen in different cultures, while red may mean anger in one, some say it's love or passion. <clears throat> so it really depends on who has the candle. And that is uh, what you're going to energize for it. I can definitely um, say that people have different preferences. But for me, you know, um, every color has a, a positive end and a negative end. While blue may uh, represent sadness and uh, depression, it can also stand for um, inspiration. I can definitely see that for inspiration, maybe confidence, at least in my opinion. <clears throat> uh, purple would stand for power, in my opinion, because I associate purple with witches, you know, because purple is said to be a witch's color. You know, so I think it stands for power. They say if you knock on a purple door, a witch lives there. That is another reason why I think that um, white, I think a lot of people agree on, stands for purification. So it's definitely good for cleansing spells. Uh, black is for banishment. Um, the, uh, red, to me can have the upside too. Um, it can stand for anger or love. Really depends on what side you're on. And white, because when white light shines through a prism, it gets all of the colors. So it basically represents all the colors. So white is definitely a universal uh, color for candles that you can utilize. Just like um, clear or uh, white quartz. You can definitely use that in pretty much any ritual. So just to reiterate, uh, color is your preference. Uh, whatever you think it represents is what it will be. After all, if you, especially if you're the one charging it, that's your deal. But anyway, so say these were just regular white colored candles. What are these used for specifically? They can be used in any ritual, but there are some spells, like I've read in some druid spells, that a lot of their um, rituals and incantations require them to burn candles for a long period of time. And this, that is where these come in. And another great thing about these kinds of candles is you can take a knife uh, or maybe a needle just, you know, maybe immerse it in a flame and you can engrave runes and symbols along it, along the body. And then as it burns, the symbols melt away and then go up into the atmosphere. So that is another great way to go. Now, obviously, one, be careful with the knife. And two, if you're going to let this burn all day, make sure you're home. And I know it may seem silly to say this, have you ever wonder why there's warning labels on everything now? I have to say this. Disclaimer. Disclaimer. So, de definitely, if you wanted to have a ritual where you needed a candle to burn all day, make sure it's, like, on your day off or something. A day when you definitely know that you're going to be home. And if something were to come up, it's okay. Blow out the candle. Relight it. Some say that doesn't work, but you know what? As long as the energy's there and no one messes with it, you're fine. You can easily relight the candle, as long as it's for the same purpose. If you were to, say, burn, like, half the candle, and you had to blow it out for some reason, and then all of a sudden you use the candle in a different ritual, now that will send mixed signals. After all, you can't be using one uh, half of the candle, you know, in a love spell and then use 
the next one for, like, let's say a revenge spell, that would mess your world up. <clears throat> now, this is just an example. Don't do that. So if you were to, say, burn half the candle and then use want to use it for another ritual that way to not waste the candle, cleanse it with some sage or reset it with your own energy. And you can pray over it too, you know, and just say your intentions out loud and as you're holding it in your hand, feel them too. Like, I hereby cleanse and bless this candle I now reset and renew all of the energies that lie within and now place in brand new energy out with the old, in with the new, out with the old, in with the new, out with the old, in with the new. You know, something like to that effect. And say it as many times as you feel because you definitely do not want mixed signals whenever you do a spell. Crossover, not good. So these are very good for spells in which you need to perform for a long period of time. Some people's rituals last all night. Some last all day. Some are only for a couple of hours. Mine never go over an hour. <clears throat> so just it's really up to you. Now, tea light candles are for minor spells. Why? Because they're small. Now, usually tea light candles come in a large pack like this. You can get them in larger packs, I think. Um, and you can place as many on your altar as needed. And you can charge each individual one or charge them all at once. Just charge the whole pack. But... They're small. They only last about, what, maybe 10, 20 minutes? They don't last very long. The wax, the wax burns away very quick. If you were to use tea light candles, and I have before, however, whenever I've done a ritual with them, I put like at least three on my altar in a certain pattern. And then I've had other candles too. So even when they burn out, the others are burning. And another creative way you can use this is um, take five out, charge them however you feel need be, place them in a star pattern, as, you know, for a pentagram. And if you wanted to, you could place a couple others like around the edges, you know, to make the circle, you know, that sort of thing. Um, well, I'm thinking of a pentagram. Like, I've learned that there's a difference between a pentacle and a pentagram. So, pentacle is the one with the circle. Pentagram is just the star. So, if you wanted to make a pentagram, you can use the five. If you want to make a pentacle, add some candles around the edge to make it a circle. So, these are for minor spells, very short spells, things that are, like, done on site. Uh, obviously, if you wanted something that lasted for hours, unless you had, like, hundreds of these... You're not going to do it. But the great thing about this is you can, uh, you can leave these somewhere safe, you know. Um, say you're working around the house. As long as you have these somewhere safe, they'll burn out rather quickly. So you won't have to worry about them. But do not leave unattended. Make sure you check on them from time to time. Because leaving candles lit in any room is always a hazard. And you don't want to burn down your house. Once again, I care for my viewers and subscribers. Now, um, these tea light candles are scented, and which brings me to the scented candles. What are these used for? Ah. Now, if you remember from uh, the videos where I enchanted the dolls, I placed a scented candle. It was the salted caramel candle on the altar to help put me in a good mood. I had already showered. I was feeling good. I placed this on my altar so that the smell could make me feel even better. And um, this put me in a good mood so that my energy wasn't corrupted by sudden memories or emotions, you know. Which you always want to stay focused on a specific emotion when you do a ritual or cast a spell. 
if you are trying to um, do a spell for someone that um, that is like for good for them, but all of a sudden, let's say you get in a fight with your parents before you do it, and all of a sudden you're thinking about that, and then you're going to be sending negative energy signals to this person, and you're going to do more harm than good. So be aware of that. Another way scented candles can be used is scent offerings for the gods. Now, there are different um, scents out there. Tons of, if you go to Yankee Candle or Bath and Body Works, although Bath and Body Works is more expensive. So if you wanted to go to Yankee Candle, I know Meyer has some scented candles. If you want to look online, you know, really shop around and see what you can find. Uh, even the thrift store may have some good deals. Uh, maybe some someone that hadn't lit a candle and it's still good. Just make sure you cleanse it before you take it home because still, you never know what energies it picked up. And um, if you are doing a ritual involving a god, try to find a scent that they will be comfortable with. Do your research. Uh, Google has a ton. Uh, read books. Books are definitely a reliable source. Um, I have many books that they they show gods and then what their favorite things are. Uh, I know Isis liked um, bay leaves, mint, chamomile. I have all those as herbs. But if you could find candles that smell like that, it would substitute herbs. For those who aren't as knowledgeable in herbs. So if you say like... If uh, you see a god, you know, like an herb that you don't know anything about, at least try to find the scent in a candle or oil form. That can be a better way. And I'll talk about oils in another video. I've used them a little bit. I have a little knowledge of them, so we'll get to that in another video. But I have always used scented candles in uh, different, uh, for different deities. Now, I have oftentimes used the same incense and candles for uh, the same deity. They didn't seem to mind um, as long as the energy that I put into it was good and I had tons of offerings for them. They didn't seem to mind. Like, I used a scented candle that smelled like Macintosh apples a lot of the times for a scent offering and it, they took it. They were fine with it. But if you can help it, Try to try. Try a little harder for them. After all, they are divine powers. They can help you with things that some mortal people can't. So, you know, just try to do well for them. Obviously, I'm pointing to the Danu statue that I have up there. So, if you see me doing this, I'm pointing to the statue I have out here. All the rest of my statues are in my room over there. Now for these. Similar to the long tape candles, these can be used for um, spells that require a little more oomph. You can let these burn all the way out. Um, they last for a good amount of time, though. So be aware. Most Many times I've had to blow them out because they, they burn really slowly. And you can do the same thing. You can etch runes and symbols in them. Obviously charge them. And um, these can be perfect for, let's say you have half a day off. But later on that day you have an engagement that you have to get to. Maybe you have to go to work. Maybe, I don't know, your kids got a play or a recital. Something like that. You can light these, like, at the beginning of your day, and they should burn before the day is out. So you just have to be aware of the timing. But these are uh, very good candles. I got them from the same um, store as these and these, Dollar Castle. Um, I believe this is from Bath & Body Works, and this is from Earthlore. So um, there are definitely other candles out there. Um... I don't have the beeswax candles, but beeswax is definitely number one. 
but I believe it can be pretty pricey. I've looked at some pretty pricey candles. So if you can find some possibly at like a thrift store or a secondhand store, try. Just be sure to cleanse them before you use them. <clears throat> but these are perfect for little short spells. So basically in order, these are perfect for specific intent spells. And they're pre-charged for your pleasure. Get my joke? <laughs> These are perfect for spells that require a lot of energy that is constantly flowing out of them. Because they're even though they're, they may burn slowly, they're still going to burn away the energy. They're going to constantly have energy going up with the wax. These are perfect for short spells if you're in a hurry or if you just want to do a quick offering uh, for candles. Now, candles do count as offerings, even the unscented ones. It's the energy they feed off of. If you want to get them a scented one, go right ahead. But regular candles count as offerings too. There have been many times when I placed unscented candles for gods and they didn't say boo. They loved the energy, actually, that I placed into them, which I always want to make them feel comfortable. Yeah, but these are for short little spells or quick little offerings that you want to make. These are perfect for scent offerings. Uh, just make sure that you get a scent specific to that deity because I don't think all deities would be happy that you use the same scent for every god. The ones I've worked with haven't had a problem with it, but you never know, some might. And then these are perfect for spells that may take half a day. Um, they're not as quick as these, but they will do in a pinch. And these are perfectly fine. If they don't burn all the way, you can blow them out and then relight them later. Just make sure it's for the same intended purpose. Or else havoc could be wrought. Candle magic is definitely a tool we utilize to harness extra power because as the wax burns, the energy as well as the wax goes into the atmosphere and then the energy actually flies higher and lighter than the wax. See, the wax may stay within the closed space of your house, but the energy goes past that. It goes past the house, up into the sky, it ripples through all worlds and dimensions, and it will definitely be received by an intended target or deity. <clears throat> These are definitely uh, great points of power. Um, some people like a lot of candles at their altars, some people only like a few, and some vary depending on what kind of spell and or deity that they are working with. So, um, technically, if you had to, uh, let's say your, in, uh, your know-how on candles for spiritual use is low, and you just want a few candles for starting out, buy three. They don't have to be huge like these. They can be small little um, tea candles like this or smaller ones like this. It's up to you. But at least buy three because three is a magic number. Three is definitely a symbol of power and all products of three. Three, six, nine, those things. <clears throat> so at least buy three. Um, all right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you feel like uh, there was something I missed, feel free to put it down in the comment section. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or ideas for more videos that I can do, put it down in the comment section. Feel free to subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss any of my future videos. And uh, thank you so much. May the blessed purifying light guide your way.